Hello, and welcome to another episode of Intune.Training, the place to learn how to use Microsoft Intune, the Stephen Adams Show, Season 2. Oh, and Woo! Ben. Well, and the, ben intern. the intern. The intern. Yeah. Ben, yeah, Ben the intern. It's Season 2. Apparently, I've uh, upgraded from guest to intern. Yeah, so, yeah sweet. <laughs> Someday we'll make you an employee. Listen, what was the stipulation that we, we came up? Once I grow a beard? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, once uh, you get the well, beard. One that we can see uh, on camera. Yes. In, in turn for life, I guess. And yeah. it can't be drawn on with magic markers. I do have a, a, a beanie that is a full face beanie with a fake beard on it. If I can find that, I will wear that for the next video. Well, okay. Sounds like plan. <laughs> sounds good. Okay. Right. Hey, so what are we here to talk about? Let's do some stuff, right? <laughs> do some stuff. Uh, okay. Hey, I get to do this one this time. All right. This is going to be fun. Uh, let's get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Hey, great. Got a desktop to work from. All right. Um, we're going to talk about how to integrate the Intune data warehouse into your uh, into Power BI and be able to pull reports and data from Power BI. Sweet. Uh, or so use, use Power use, BI. Sorry, use Power can you, BI. Can you... Can you minimize my beautiful face from your screen? Wow, I want to see micro buffer. Okay. Um, all right. So there are some docs that we can put in the description that get you to getting to so the data warehouse. So we are going to go to endpoint.microsoft.com. AKA.ms slash memac. Yeah, yeah, dude, endpoint.microsoft.com is just as fast. It really is. <laughs> Too many docs. Uh, also, also at this point, uh, it is worth to note that uh, time is running out rapidly uh, to stop using Portal.Azure for Intune related work. This is going to be managed at Microsoft. Microsoft. Don't use End of days. Microsoft either. No, it's I not never use that. Yeah. First of August. First of August. Right, get it together. Get, it's get it together. Soon. Get it together. Right. Come on. Come on. Up. Come on. All right. Okay. We so get, you got to report. Okay. First. You got to report, are we? No, 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 no. We're going to go to uh, Graph, the Graph Explorer, and I will show you a thing. AKA.ms slash GE preview. I just go to the thing, and I click through a couple ways and get to the thing, and we go. Okay, so first, um, you can go to Graph Explorer and type it, things in and get signed in. So, hey, that worked. I signed in. So do that first, and then um, you're going to switch this to beta because beta is way better. And we're going to go to device management and then devices. I think that gets us something, right? Mm, maybe no. it's a capital G, please. Capital D, I think, no. Device, maybe? Uh, that doesn't necessarily matter. Come on. You shouldn't need devices. It's not, devi- it's not devices. Just do device management to verify yeah, that it works digit. first. Just device management. Yay. If you click that guy, that should tell us more things. Yeah, it does. Potentially. This should dump us the metadata, which will give us all of the thingamajigs. Yeah, but go back to the Graph Explorer for a sec. I just want to show you some stuff. If you scroll down uh, on the left-hand uh, pane. I've never had any good should, success over here doing this. Uh, it's in, it's improved significantly over the last little yes. bit. Um, we want to go into, uh, where is it? Exactly. That's the yeah, thing. That's my experience. Intune doesn't really appear there that often. In the right. This mm-hmm. is all Azure, the Azure yeah. graph, not the Intune <clears throat> graph. That's the, the challenge. So sure. this gives you the metadata for all of the device management um, graph entities and things that you can see. So you can scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. Okay. So the other day I said, hey, let me go pull some data from the graph. And so I just went to the root of graph because I thought, Oh, that would be neat. Let's do that. And so it's important to note that if you go there, it intermingles at least the Azure graph and the Intune graph, and you can get to, you know, you can see the difference. You can just put device management, and that takes you into the Intune side. Um, But there are other places you can pull data from. And I thought, okay, cool, that'd be great. Let me just go pull that in in my uh, Power BI uh, data. So if I just go to get data, O data feed, and just mm-hmm. go dump that in and put some credentials in. Surely this will work. I'm foreshadowing. You tell. Are you foreshadowing? Why are we foreshadowing? 
Wait, well, is this that thing problem. that I, Steve? Is this that thing that I ran into a couple of years yes. ago? Yes. Ah, cool, sweet. And that we've spoken about at conferences. Yeah. Yeah. So, this, as, so an, as an intern, I I know a little bit about this. It's pulling in the uh, the, the, yeah. the uh, metadata you learn things at, at at university. Yeah, that's no, pretty neat. Well, see, I've never tried this before, so you know, first sure. first go out of the gate. So it's got 115. Um, t Any top point? level entities that you can get to here. And I said, oh, well, cool, this is great. Let me go and try to pull that. Well, so if you pull devices, this will pull you Azure AD devices. That's correct. Uh, should. And if you pull device it management, will. that will pull, that should pull your Intune stuff. So let me get nope. this eval. Oh, but oh, access to resources forbidden. Well, that seems odd because I was just here and um, and I signed can, in with the same yeah, identity too. I did, and I could go here, and I could go devices, and run the query, and um, wow. Authorization. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, uh, so I don't have that. So I can modify my permissions. This is good. So a consent to these. And for anyone playing at home, uh, this Graph Explorer is the new UI. Um, it allows us to do interactive uh, permission changes without having to re-log in, potentially. Um, yep. It also gives us the ability to grab the access token so that we can then move on to other external uh, REST uh, tools such as Postman or VS Code or things like that, which is really, really handy. Also, something to point out here is that um, you don't have to check this box. You can hit accept here and just grant permissions using your account grant permissions to the thing that needs to be done uh, that needs that it needs access to while you're using it um yeah. if you click this this grants it for everyone and well i'm the only one so i'm going to grant it but uh actually this is our tenant so you guys too but still um so i'm going to consent to that hopefully we'll get them all here for yeah, the Graph so, Explorer, though, it is kind of important that uh, people understand that it's probably a good thing that uh, this gets consented on behalf of the organization so that people can uh, have more experience with Graph. Um, definitely. Because it's a well-known and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an application ID that's uh, created by Microsoft, therefore it should be trusted. Uh, it's not some weird third-party thing that someone's just created. So there's less risk involved. Hey, exactly. look at that. And, and so the, the important thing to mention here as well is that Adam, all, all Adam needed to give from a permission point of view was the first one, directory read own, uh, read all. Yeah. Um, we weren't going and doing read write or anything like that. And if you're going to be doing things on the graph API, focus on what you're trying to be doing and make sure you only delegate the access that you need. Yeah, because if you don't, if you over delegate, you then can end up in a situation where the data is just not going to be what you need it to be, or somebody could um, corrupt your environment well, and take that token yeah. and do something inappropriate. Yeah, as soon as you add the ability to write, uh, you're opening up the ability for someone to go in and change things, um, mm -hmm. which is yeah, it's fairly standard and sort of stuff. But I don't think we've really talked a lot about. The inherent risk in in API access. Yeah, we haven't. No, because we're just trying we're to play with it. Yeah. How dare you, Steve? I've got so much to talk about. That's what those Feel security free. guys are for. Remember? Yeah. Is that their deal. Um, so so what? So what I what I experienced was um, I get here go device management and we go to device management and we ended up with the same error message there. Even yep. though case space matters, I think. So this works without modifying any permissions. But That's if correct. I take that same one, and um, you'll see I've tried that here, and it doesn't, yep. I can't pull it. But if so, I, now that I've granted permissions on devices, though, this should pull, right? Yes, Azure. that's correct. So the thing so I wanted to point out, uh, okay, I must, it's probably got my cash credentials and I... Sort of. Let, let, let me talk you through why okay. it's having issues. Um, so what happens in Power BI is if you go to authentication for that API, and I can never remember where the authentication is here. Do you remember, Ben? There we go. Yeah. Now we go yeah. um, 
edit, you know, yep, edit or credentials, and you yep. select here, right? And this is using a default well-known um, application ID to access the Graph API. It only has permission to uh, Azure Active Seven. Directory. Yeah. Primarily Azure Active Directory and some of the reporting associated to that. To change it, you go, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go and grant that extra permission. Well, it's actually a hidden app ID inside Azure Active, Active Directory. And yeah. on the flip side, you can't go in and uh, specify that identity. So if you go back to Power BI, Adam, theoretically, and we go edit that permission on that one, and we go edit, uh, theoretically, you should be able to select web, a, uh, web API on the left-hand side. This is where you can put in a key and you can build out the whole proper authentication for that endpoint. So what that the auth key? Yeah. So this is where you can put in, uh, I th actually, if I get to hit cancel on that page. For so me this out. is where you do this. Create a client app and yeah, yeah. all that stuff. Build but even that's not going to work. Yeah, uh, into Power BI because what so happens the, is as soon as Power BI identifies the graph.microsoft.com endpoint, it, it uses, uses its own special app ID, even if yep. you've provided a different one. So, so okay, there's a, there's a couple of things that I want to yeah there's a couple of things I want to talk about specifically around what we're doing because I think this is a lot of people get confused about it. So the issue we're having is that. Uh, Power BI doesn't let us go. We want to use this skew of permissions uh, to to get our data. So what we were, what Adam was doing in the Graph Explorer was he was creating the skew of permissions, and then it was reauthenticating and generating that access token. Uh, you can actually open, you can grab that access token. Uh, you can open it in a JWT decoder. Um, and you can see what permission you have. Uh, just open a new tab and just search for JWT decode. It should be like the, not the, the, the yeah, that, that one there is fine. Uh, scroll down and just paste it in there. So, okay, so from here we can see in the scope or SCP, We've got all of the permissions. Uh, this is on the right hand side, just a little bit up. Yep. Yeah, right uh, by just, my IP yeah. address and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the important stuff that changes relatively and it's really not important. But we can see that we've got the scope permissions of what uh, of what that authentication token gives us. So what happens is when you're in Power BI and you authenticate to Graph or to whatever, you don't get the ability to choose which application ID you you get, and that application ID defines the scope of permission. So that's where you run into this problem. So I just wanted to point that out because this is something that I ran into a while ago. Um, and this is the key problem. But this is not a key that I can go put in that in into the permissions thing and use as my it's, key though. It's not, so how do you get around it? Oh, well, now that you ask, uh, I will show you at least what I was thinking we would do. Um, but so, so I wanted to, I was hoping that Azure would actually let us pull devices from the Believe graph, it. but no, I thought this worked before. Maybe it doesn't. Okay. It's fine. It works with um, users. Definitely. I know that. Okay. So some of these, some of these should work. Uh, I know that I had some of them working previously. Yeah. Um, but like you're saying, I mean, that's a good point about the default permissions for that particular SKU. So I was unaware of what would work and what wouldn't. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you could spend a while digging digging through that. Oh yeah. So um, anyway, uh, the point here was that you can do it here and you can even go into um, uh, PowerShell and, and query some of this stuff as well, at least to some degree. Um, but you can't just directly query the graph because of the things that they've just mentioned. So <laughs> inside of uh, the endpoint, portal. If we go to reports, we can go to data warehouse and Ooh, endpoint analytics. What's that? Oh, uh, we're going to do this one um, soon too. Let me just hit it watch, start on it. Yeah. Watch this space. We got some stuff. Actually, that's going to yeah. take a couple of days to bring 
We're going to tell you to come back. No, no, no. Uh, devices may already be collecting the data. Yeah. It just has to calculate it. We'll see. So, yeah. um, let's yeah, come back. So we'll, we'll come back to already, that on a different session. It's already doing stuff. It's already, yeah, it's going to be magic. So, um, so, I'll go back. Quit distracting us. We'll come back. But you'll probably have to watch <laughs> this video to get the beginning of the next video. <laughs> I, I did it already. I enabled the thing. It's already done. Okay. So, copy to clipboard. Um, we want to get this OData feed. And um, it specifically says, use this for Power BI to do things, right? So, so we'll go yep. back in, go to get data, OData feed. Um, anybody want to tell what OData means? What is OData? Oh, data. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> so OData is a, um, uh, a REST open data protocol, and uh, it is a standard. So what's great is, so if you've ever heard us talk about the admin service, which you probably haven't heard about on this channel much, but if you followed any of the stuff that I do outside of this, um, the Config Manager admin service uh, uses OData as well as part of their API. And so you'll find in many, many of the Microsoft APIs, they use OData as the um, standard for, um, what's great about it is it gives you standard syntax and standard formatting for uh, how to how to build queries and how to interact with the API. So if you know OData for one API, it should work for the others if they're following proper standards. So just that's what OData, when, if people say get the OData feed, that's, I mean, that's what they're saying is it's just just saying that it's the standard feed that you're pulling there yeah. um, from the API. Okay, so we just hit okay with that. Now, um, this particular feed is only restricted, it's, it's restricted to only the data inside the Intune data warehouse. So it's in the yes. Intune, it's stuff that you could query from the Intune graph. Um, you notice that we do, uh, we have devices here, but this is not, the uh, the same, we are already inside that device management node. So we are now nested in that. So that's equivalent to. Um, so it's the Intune devices, not the AOD devices. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, so that's, that's equivalent to doing device management devices. <laughs> no. Come on. It, isn't it? No, uh, it's. I thought it was, but maybe you don't have it set up. Uh, come on. I, I, uh, Hang on. Well, let this me, is, let this me bring is normal. It. This is what we expect, right? This is exactly what we expect. You have to pull up the Intune graph docs. I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing the same thing, too. Just went through all this. But the point here is that as you go through this, as you experience this, you will, it's, uh, you will see that it's not the same as the Intune, I mean, as the uh, Azure API, uh, graph API. So here we are. So we're under device management in the Intune uh, uh, graph here, and we should be able to um, do a managed device. And so it's, oh, it's, it's managed device, list managed devices. And so it should just be device management, manage devices. Manage devices. That's it. My bad. Which makes me then Ooh. wonder, is this the Azure device? No. It's the Intune device. It is, because it's coming from the Intune data warehouse. Yeah. Well, why can't so I pull this that? is where Intune data warehouse changes. Oh, it's, some changing, of it's changing the, yeah. Yep. Okay. Because, and again, it's it's worth saying here that the data in the Intune data warehouse is not the same as the direct graph data. It is uh, for the lack of yeah. It's for the lack of another term. It is historical, so it is processed and stored somewhere else. So the yeah, and it is not it is time. not real time. No, no exactly. Um, it's and it's definitely. also it's also worth noting that this isn't permanent historical data it is a maximum and steve tell me if i'm wrong here it's 90 days of data uh i believe that's what it was last time i looked into it um, correct so but it was also it was it's when i looked at it and this was quite a number of years ago now so it may have changed um, I don't think it but when i looked when i looked at it previously was it was 90 days of data 
unless you had a very large number of devices in there, which would right. then mean that it would be a lot smaller. So in the very large environments, it could be a day's worth of data. Sure, right. Um, and I, I, the reason that but I that bring that up that may have changed, is... and I'm putting the disclaimer there, I've not looked into it to give you a, a definitive answer on that. If anyone, if anyone knows better, put it in the comments. But I think the main thing that I wanted to point out is that I've, I've, I get a lot of questions about uh, can we use Intune Data Warehouse as our like uh, CMDB or our asset management database? And absolutely not. That is not what this is for. This is for right. potentially doing trend uh, uh, reporting. That's correct. But again, only on a relatively short scale, three months maximum. Um, if you want to start storing this stuff for major historical reporting, you need to come up with your own way of, of maintaining and storing that data. Um, and that's probably a very, very important point there. Intune is not a CMDB. Don't try and make it a CMDB. That's not what it's designed for. Go and provision another system. Exactly. Yep. Pull it into ServiceNow. Pull it into, what is it? What is it? Remedy or um, any of those platforms that have your service ticketing. Service Manager console? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you deal with um, creating the connector for that, you and yeah. Jakob. Okay, so let's get back to the Power BI thing. All right, so, um, <laughs> yeah, it's spiraling the drain here. Okay, so um, so I've gone through and I've selected several entities here, and um, as is uh, our way, we are not going, we, we haven't practiced this in advance, so we're going to just see, see what we can put together and see if we can build a cool, quick, little Power BI dashboard thing with some of the it data here. So, so, um, so what we're going to want to do next is we're going to want to build relationships between the items if it doesn't already put them together. Sometimes it's smart and Power BI will put the connections together for us. So you saw right there it says detecting relationships. So maybe it will have put some relationships. Look at that. Um, so this is this is you get these dotted line relationships, which means that it could be related to a user or to a device. So that gets interesting there. But um, one of the things I like to do on these many times is to set to change the um, the filter, the cross filter direction, set that to yeah. both. And then that's a you'll you'll see that sometimes where like the other day I, I was doing it and I did a pie chart and every category had the same number because yeah. I didn't have I didn't have the cross filter direction set. Once you set it, then it can filter. What this means is that a one to many relationship allows the data the child to filter the parent if you without setting cross filter to both and leaving it at single only the parent can filter the child um so yep. anyway that'll make sense once you once you and it's also wall the first time <laughs> it's also worth noting that uh when you start seeing your pie graphs starting uh bringing like the same relational data and it all just looks wrong it's primarily because you've got that relational scheme incorrect. Um, That's yep. correct. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, so just you as need to a, get a apply changes up the top. I don't know why there's pending changes because just, you changed. Oh, because you've got two device tables. Yeah, I'm not sure where that one's coming from. Because oh, that's that's the Azure really. device table. That's the one that is yeah. Blend. So go into that one and kill it off. That's why I had devices too. Yes. Now we're not going to get into the how to use Power BI at this point. That's a whole different thing. That's a different so, series that we're not involved in and we're not going to spend any time on it. Uh, you just missed a user group on it the other day that I did um, where we talked about it. So uh, I'm just checking a thing here. Is uh, Power BI dot training available? Probably. <laughs> no, it's uh, <laughs> someone snagged it. There we go. All right. Uh, okay, so you can drag your data out here and do whatever you want. So what, what's the thing that we want to try out? So like device registration state. So we can say the device registration state name and put that in a pie chart. And because it's, oh, it, it said state. So therefore it thought we should do a That's map. That's funny. That's great. Like it. 
Um, so we can drag the device ID, which would probably be a good unique value. So we'll do um, the, that's the wrong spot, values and do account distinct. <clears throat> and so we can see that we have 17 registered and two revoked. And if we click that, that'll tell us there's more uh, revoked ones, but maybe they don't have unique Azure device IDs on them. So, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So it helps to know what the data should sort of look like so that you can validate that it's looking the way that you expect it. So this makes sense because I counted distinct device IDs um, yeah. and clearly that's not a good unique field to use. So if I switch that to non-distinct, now I get the right, I get a good match there. So anyway, I mean, that's it. I mean, we've done, we made yep. a Power BI report in minutes. It would have been minutes if you guys would have shut up for a minute. Um, <laughs> what are you trying to say, Adam? Too We're many just talking. adding color. Yeah, Adam, control your intern, really. It's, it's the important yeah. thing to say here. Um, I'm trying to lead here so all right so while you talk about the intune data warehouse um let's let's get real nerdy uh while you make this look pretty so uh many years ago when i thought that power bi wasn't gonna send me insane um i uh came up with a solution to get around that error that you had where you were doing the graph calls um, and basically what it was is to create an azure function that would do the query on behalf of the user that had the correct uh, application ID so that you could just do uh, uh, rest calls to that URL and it would do the query on behalf of you and then send back the data, thereby uh, negating that problem that Power BI has that you can't control what app ID you're authenticating with. Um, I believe so the term is man in the middle. A hundred percent it is a man in the middle, but it is a uh, structured man in the middle solution. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. This is fine. All right, intern. Um, yes. That sounds like a whole lot of work uh, to make that work out. Surprisingly, it wasn't. It wasn't really. It just the the hardest part was realizing what the problem was. Um, I mean, you know, the the um, what you call it, uh, Azure Functions are. Awesome. They are. Yeah, they are. They, they really are. And they now they you can now uh, do Azure Functions with PowerShell 7, which is faster and cooler and absolutely nothing to do with training. So, Well, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> you are so welcome. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, I mean, let's we, we could almost end this one on in time if we really want to just do that. Cause we have a time limit. This is great, though. This looks really good. I know. It's getting donut. better and better here. Like Somebody's going to ask for me for a copy of this later. You know that's that's coming because um, that's just what people are going to do. They're going to ask. Uh, let's but see. Don't so, ask. You can do this yourself. You've seen Adam clicking. Yeah. I have had no no plans. That didn't come out very cool. well. All right. Yeah, it's too many, too many clicking, really. Yeah. Wow. So, so let's let's uh, let's yeah. Let's wrap. All right, and we'll move on. So, what we'll we showed you today up. was that you can't directly query the graph um, natively in Power BI, but you certainly can go grab the Into Data Warehouse and pull that in. There are numerous docs and things from Microsoft on the on getting started with with this on connecting to the to the data warehouse. Um, there is you know so here's, this is a great one going through the whole thing. So um, you should check these out. This gives you even more. So go out there and I, I, I have been heavily attempting to promote Power BI for a while now. Um, and I am by no means a, a um, data specialist or um, any sort of reporting guru or anything. I, I really suck at this and I struggle at this. But most importantly, um, having you should not be afraid to use these tools. Power BI, Power BI Desktop is free. Go get it, use it. Um, it's free to use on your own. Um, the moment you want to share this and things, you need to look at licensing, but don't be afraid to just go and grab it and get a copy and start messing with it. Pull it down from the Windows Store um, because it really 
is fantastic. The Power BI is. community is great. There's plenty yep. of Power BI, um, amazing Power BI user groups and MVPs. There, um, there are tons of amazing YouTube channels. Like, well, I don't want to send you to the YouTube channels because they are so much better than ours. You may never come <laughs> back and watch ours. <laughs> But uh, you should look at the uh, Two Guys in a Cube channel. You oh, should look that stuff at, is so um, good. Razor, 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 Razor Rad. Man, I get his name backwards. Every, is it, I think it's right. Um, he's the, I think he's in a, a, the Microsoft Regional Director for Power BI, I believe. One of the regional directors, I believe. Um, anyway, if you've if you've been in the Config Manager Intune community and you see what, what the community produces the power bi has has as good or better community in in their regard around using power bi and pulling data from it so um don't be afraid to use it i i've just been teaching myself and just poking at it until things look right mainly because i don't ever want to use ssrs or excel again so um yeah. and you just yeah. saw how easy this was to do this the other day i, I mean, in the user group I pulled in data from five data sources and you know from SQL, from Config Manager and SQL, from the uh, admin service API, from the graph API, from Intune, from log analytics, all different data sources and an Excel spreadsheet you can bring in or text documents or scrape the web, Crazy. integrate all that information and do magic. And even you talked about Azure Functions. I've, I have a blog series on talking about how to create a um, Azure function and then integrate it into Power BI to do data calculations for you to do a lookup or do whatever. So, you know, you got to start out small, but what I just did here took minutes. And if you needed this information, it's right at your fingertips. Um, a great thing yeah. that I, I like to do is, I mean, you know, just to, to draw inspiration on like, well, I don't know what, you know, what do I want my pictures to look like? Go here, go and see what, what graphs did they put here in, you know, in Intune? I'm going to struggle to even find one as an example at this point. But um, and it's it's fair to say as well that the back end of uh, all the reports that you see, like the the just the heads up reports on the portal, use Power BI to to generate. You know, they they use that framework or the no, they the use Power, Power BI embedded. Yeah, oh, exactly. oh 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 oh! Sorry, while we're here, I got we got to do it. Um, Bruce Bruce said he found this, and I haven't I hadn't challenged him on it to see where he did it. So this was a tip that they gave during the, uh, the um, oh what was it one of the one of the things we just did recently where um, virtual event, and they said how do we know what you know what's being called um, in from graph, and it was like oh open up the developer tools and you can use that to see what calls are going out to. I haven't tried it's it yet, on, so I'm not sure it's where a it's network at the top. Is it? Yeah, because uh, it'll give you all the um, addresses that it's going to. So then if you select any of the things on the left-hand side, so just go to um, not necessarily implant analytics, but if you select. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah awesome. There it is. So that URL, so copy, link address, take that guy and paste it in here. And it's going to fail. Yeah, that's, so look, that's in the graph. Explorer. Look at that. Yeah, but if uh, you go, you can do even more. If you if you go back to that page. Oh, that requires an access token. So yeah. Back to the page. Yep. Yeah, uh, and then you go into uh, response. Yep. On the down, down, the down, 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 up. up. So close. Got it. Got there it. Got go. it. Oops. Uh, so you can actually. I don't know what I did here now. So, so, yeah, select that one. There it is. Ah. Yeah. So you can actually start drilling into how the queries are being created as well. Um, yeah. And what the responses are and how the data sits there. It's actually exactly. really powerful. This yeah. is how this is how I generate a lot of the API based modules that I work on. Um, is I'll just go into the portal. I'll start digging around with developer mode enabled. Um, and I'll I'll pull what I need from that. Yeah, and this is I mean the thing that's great about this is this is what I mean this is what was Microsoft recommended this the other day. This oh yeah if yep. you want to know go this is the best way to go find out what we're doing there. And definitely. Um, so and and it's the same as if you've ever done 
uh, config manager and you've opened up the SMS provider log as you navigate through the console and you can watch the queries that hit there, it's the same thing. You're just, you're watching to see, okay, where are they pulling that data and being able to go and, and dig into it. What I think mm -hmm. is going to be really cool here is that, um, so I know we were ending, but we're not because there's just too much. This is uh, this is a good <laughs> good tangent to go on here. Um, Season two, nothing's changing. Yeah, nothing, That's nothing right. at all. So if Too you do, the, uh, so what's cool is these remediations as well as the uh, model performance and stuff. So if you open up your model performance, and and I said it was Bruce, it wasn't Bruce, it was um, someone else. Bruce was getting okay. excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. So the the thing I was uh, wanting to point out is that so user experience analytics device performance. So if I go in back into here. And I want to go, uh, actually, I can just go get it back from my main feed. So if I go back to my source here, I should be able to pop this back open and re-navigate. So here's all the views that it's going to pull. Um, no, it's not. It's, so it's not included in this warehouse. No. Because so, it, and it, and it's, uh, that's that, right, because that, it's pulling directly that, from the graph. Yeah, that data is calculated on the graph, and you're not going to see it. Um, yeah. So that's yeah, that's one of the downsides to the data warehouse is that uh, it's yeah. it's literally a warehouse of data. It, you don't get some of the shinier things. Um, yep. You just yeah, you need to be aware of that. You know, it's it's good, but it's not as good as the live data that you can get. So the 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 thing that I wanted to I was hoping to point out there, and I'll show you on this side, is that some of the stuff is not in graph some of the stuff in in the portal is actually uses log analytics to um, store the data and so that's a whole different yeah. place to get the data so desktop analytics sits on a log analytics workspace and so its data is stored in log analytics and that's a whole different way to um, to get to that data so if you go to connected services your workspace and then this is your your um, log analytics workspace ID so if we're in the same location we can go to log analytics and you can pull this data as well. Now I'm in a different scope because I've got multiple resource groups, but if I switch that um, to a different scope, my desktop analytics scope, now I can get to my Microsoft 365 analytics data as well. Um, now this is obviously connected to a config manager environment, but I can pull data here and then I can use this export button to grab a Power BI query. Watch this at 50% speed in YouTube to slow it down if you need to. I'm excited and I want to. Or do it at 125 and feel like you're hacking the main thing. <laughs> Hacks are, man. <laughs> uh, so you do a blank query, advanced editor, come in here, paste it in, hit done. And in a minute, you're going to get. Some credential prompt, same deal, sign out with a different user. And um, the same the same stuff applies that, um, that Steve was mentioning. Um, the, um, the, the setting up a token, you could set up a special key instead of um, what we're doing here, instead of using user credentials. But once again, we're not trying to show you all the all the bits and pieces, just kind of get you started yeah. here. But anyway, so now I've pulled data from from Log Analytics, which yep. is housed in um, the MIM Admin Center as well. So anyway, cool bits. Use it. Awesome. Use Power BI. It's amazing. It's the best thing ever. Yeah, it all is. Right. Done. Thanks, boys. All right. Let's wrap that session up. Hey, that was a good. Uh, that was a good uh, episode one, season two, season two, episode one. Yeah, yeah episode one. Getting off to a good start. It's downhill from here. Sorry, folks. Yeah, successful hey, demo, man. We should just finish this one while we while we can. <laughs> oh, by the way, since we were talking about graph, I mean, I put a graph. <laughs> <laughs> it's too on the nose there, but that was terrible. Very was terrible. Yeah. All right. Later. On that note, see you later. Bye. Bye.